Welcome back. Today we'll discuss the church father and philosopher Justin Martyr. What was his importance in the early church and how is he helpful now? Justin Martyr was born around the years 100 to 110 AD in Flavia, Neapolis, which is a city in Judea or modern day Israel. His parents raised him in a pagan household as they were not Jews at the time. In fact, it's even speculated that his ancestry ties back to Rome. Justin then began to attend philosophical schools. The first school was that of Stoicism. Stoics taught that one must accept whatever fate throws upon them. Justin's problem with this school was that when he had asked about God, the Stoic teacher proposed that such knowledge was unnecessary to know. After this, Justin left the school and moved on to a peripatetic school of philosophy. These philosophers studied the teachings of Aristotle. Justin started to enjoy the school at first, but he then realized that they cared more about money than philosophy. He continued on to the school of Pythagoras, but they demanded of Justin to know music, astronomy, and geometry before he could learn philosophy. Justin thought that these teachings were unnecessary and that one could practice philosophy without them. Finally, Justin joined a platonic school of philosophy. He actually enjoyed their teachings at first, but then was eventually converted to Christianity. Justin was walking near a seashore one day by himself and thinking about philosophy. All of a sudden, an old man walked up to him and started to question him. Justin was confused, but the conversation quickly led to a debate of God and philosophy. Justin explained how philosophy can explain God, but the old man, who was a Christian, challenged Justin's view and said, There existed, long before this time, certain men more ancient than all those who are esteemed philosophers, both righteous and beloved by God, who spoke by the Divine Spirit and foretold events which could take place and which are now taking place. They are called prophets. This old man basically is saying that these prophets properly can display who God is and not these modern philosophers. The man eventually converted Justin to Christianity. Justin wrote many writings, but he has three most notable texts which have still survived to this day. His first is that of his apology or petition to the Roman Emperor Antonius Pius. He ruled as emperor from 138 to 161 AD. In this petition, he calls for justice to be served. He says, For as for us, we reckon that no evil can be done to us, unless we be convicted as evildoers or proved to be wicked men, and you can kill but not hurt us. What Justin is saying is that if a Christian commits an illegal act, then the Romans should punish him. But if they have committed no crime and simply claim to be a Christian, they should not be punished at all. He even continues to say that even if the Romans kill them, they cannot hurt them, as they will go to heaven. His second petition, or apology, was addressed to the Roman Senate, and it follows along the same lines as the first apology, but it is simply more philosophical. His final work is titled Dialogue with Trypho. Trypho was a strict Jew who followed the law. In this work, Trypho questions Justin on why they don't follow the law as well. Justin says this, As then circumcision began with Abraham and the Sabbath and sacrifices and offerings and feasts with Moses, it has been proved they were enjoined on account of the hardness of your people's heart. So it was necessary, in accordance with the Father's will, that they should have an end in him who was born of a virgin. The two go back and forth, and Justin even mentions how on multiple occasions Jesus appears in the Old Testament. The two are not able to convert each other, but they still find much respect for one another at the end. Justin moved from his home country to Rome and took on a leadership role there. One of his most famous disciples was that of Tatian. Tatian famously created the Diatessaron. To create this, he took all four Gospels and made one complete narrative of them all. After Justin had died though, Tatian became influenced with Gnosticism and became a heretic. During Justin's stay at Rome in 165 AD, he had debated a man named Crescens, who was a philosopher, in which Justin had beat him in the debate. Crescens became angered and contacted the prefect Junius Rusticus so that Justin and other Christians should be tried. 
Junius held the child and proclaimed that all these Christians had to do was make a sacrifice and they would live. Every Christian rejected this idea and said, do what you will, for we are Christians and do not sacrifice to idols. They were all whipped, including Justin, and then beheaded. This is where Justin was given the name Justin Martyr. Thank you for watching. I've put all my sources in the description below, so I recommend that you read them for yourselves. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and as always, God bless.